Hi everyone, this is Jesse from SkySive. Today I just want to do a quick real world example for how we can use the quick design or group as the calculator to do a real world bureau code example from this textbook. Now, the example I'm just going to do is just the first example in this textbook. I'm going to type in design example and just go through this first example here. So let's just make this full screen for now. Look at what this example is going to entail. In this design example, we're looking at a partial depth of the template. Um, here we can see we have two different size beams being connected together. And where they meet, we have two different size plates. The plate on the left is going to have four bolt rows, and the plate on the right is going to have six bolt rows. To do our design for this bolt connection, what we could do with our quick design, our bolt capacity calculator, is we could do two separate runs of the tool. We could set the geometry for this left plate, put the force of 340 kilonewtons into that complete run, and we could come back again, um, input the parameters for the right hand side, um, do the run, and make sure that both plates are conforming with the design standard. What I'm going to do today, because it's pretty much running through um, two different uh, examples of the same thing, what I'm going to do is just do the left plate, um, and then the right plate would just be an exercise that you could do on your own. So, we can get our input, inputs for the geometry here. We can see the bolts are spaced 140 apart, and we have two um, kind of bolt columns um, with the four bolt rows spaced at 70 apart. We can see the edge distance of 40 on the top, and the edge distance on the right is just going to come from the fact that the plates are 200 mils wide. We can see that the plate on the left is 10 mils thick, whereas the plate on the right is 12 mils thick. And we have our bolt details here, M20 bolts, size 8.8, um, and we have our material and bolt details. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the quick design calculator. Um, what I'll do actually is I'll make this full screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here to the quick design um, section. I'm going to click the country that I'm interested in. I want to do the European standard. And I want to use this bulk group capacity calculator tool. So let's open that up. Now, we saw the um, inputs before. So I'm just going to reference the design example off page now, um, inputting those values we saw before. So our spacing in the X direction is 140 mils. And what I saw when I put those values in is this dimension standing updated. And that's because um, these dimensions are too small. So for example, if I made this bolt spacing, just as an example, um, like we could imagine, if I made this 300, then the plate width would no longer make sense. So what this plate width would update to is 300 plus the edge distance in X times 2. So I'd expect this to update to 400. And that's exactly what we see. So that's the minimum dimension it can be for those two other parameters. So it's a nice quick update to make sure that what we're putting in is valid um, and makes sense and isn't going to give us issues when we try to run and look at the results later. So anyway, let's put that back to the 140 should be. We see the plate automatically size down for us. Um, but this place should actually be 200, and I think I might get an error. If I try to do that, um, what we instead need to do is um, update this edge distance to 30, and this can also automatically update our plate dimension to 200 mils. So our Y spacing from the diagram was 70 mils, and we had four bolt rows. Our Y edge distance is 40 mils, and now this is the exact um, layout of what we have in the example for the left um, plate. So if you scroll down, plate thickness is already correct. Bolt size is already correct. Plate grade 8.8, .8. so correct. For um, bolt shear strength, we can select intersecting through the thread or intersecting through the shaft. The thread is more conservative, and that's generally what you'd always consider. So we can select thread, which is what's also used for this example. We don't have a chance to stop bolt or any packing thickness. Um, for our plate, this is the um, strength for our 406 times 178 UKB. And in this design example, we're actually using the British NX. So this plate grade is taken from table 3.1 of the European standard, but the values they're using, um, I'm going to go down to custom, the values they're using is going to be 410 MPA. So that's going to be a minor difference because they're using the British NX. Um, the hole is just going to be a normal hole, but we also, if we were doing another example, we have all these other options, like oversized, which would um, you know, update our whole size. But in our case, we're just going to go back to normal. Our factors of safety, we can change. In this case, um, they're using the British NX sort of partial factor of safety for the um, plate strength. They're going to use this, going to be 1.1, but well, I'm just going to be conservative and just keep this as 1.25 because we also need this for the bolt strength. This elastic or plastic analysis method is talking about the tension forces. In our case, we only have shear forces, so this isn't going to matter. Um, this plate support condition uh, is about block shear tear out. In this case, you um, can just keep it as a one support plate. Prior analysis is again related to tension forces. I have a separate video talking about the prior concepts, which you can watch if you're interested in learning more about prior. Well, for this example, um, it doesn't actually matter what I input, but I'm just going to let's just make it one just to show itself. We're not considering this. And now we have the forces from our example. So I'm just going to set this all to zero. And the force that we actually have is we have a force in the y direction, a force to our y axis here, um, acting up at 340 kilonewtons. Final input is about showing a stress graph. In this case, I don't want to, um, we don't need to show it, so I'm just going to keep that as hidden. But if you want to see how this affects your results, you can show that and have a run with it yourself and have a look at what that looks like. Um, so again, in the center, after running, we can see our output report. On the right hand side, we have a nice summary of all our results. Um, but let's just focus on the center for now, which will be the more detailed output. What we can do with that detailed output as well is we can get a nice PDF report that we can share with others. So I'm just going to click this PDF report um, and download it, and we can have a look at that um, as if we were another engineer, maybe having a look at this uh, 
Like if, if for example, we share this with another engineer, this is what they would see. So we've got the inputs. This is exactly um, what we needed to construct this example and what someone else would need to construct this. We have our diagram here showing the layout just as we saw it in our input. Just showing this screen. And zoom in a bit so it's clearer. We've got all our input details here. And then finally, we start calculations. So we have geometric properties, which generally is needed to calculate our moments are going to be translated into shear intention forces and bolt group. In this case, we only have the one vertical force and we don't actually need these properties in our calculation, but these are just always calculated anyways. Um, if you want to know more about how these properties are used, I do have a separate uh, video on the distribution of forces and wall groups and how these factors um, would affect the results. So as we go down, we see the shear loading distribution. We can see that we have this you know, semi-long formula, but in reality, for this example, what's going to happen is um, we don't have a moment system. It's just going to go zero, zero. And our force is just literally going to be um, the total force of 340. Well, actually, sorry, this force is zero, zero in this case. And this one here is just going to equal 340 uh, divided by NV, which is, sorry, P volts. And that's just the force here that we get, uh, that we see gets calculated. So this is just a very simple example, um, but in other cases, you might have different forces or different bolts, particularly if we have um, a torsion force or a MZ uh, force. As we scroll down, um, we'll go down to tensile, tensile loading on the bolt group. Uh, and we can see that just that tensile force is zero. So um, we have this fine factor, but in this case, it doesn't matter. And now we get down to our bulb strength calculations. So first of all, we're going to calculate the shear strength based on all our inputs. So we see a nice summary of the inputs up the top here. We can see that we have things like our area, our bulb strength, uh, and other factors just calculated and summarized up here. Now we can always see on the left-hand side where these values are coming from as well, which is quite nice. As we scroll down, we see we get a shear strength for the bulb of 94 kilonewtons. And if I go back to our example, um, we can look at the values that get calculated. So here they have a nice summary of all the checks they do. They check things like the beam, web, and shear. But in our example, what we're actually concerned with is the connection. So I'll just go down to check eight. Nine. Connection going. That should be it. Okay, so for check eight there, yeah, this is the exact example we're looking at. We have about 340 kilonewtons on our bulk group, um, this arrangement. And we might have gone a bit too far. So we've got this uh, force here. So for M20, 8.8 volts, we get a strength of 94 kilonewtons, which is the exact same as what we just calculated. As we scroll down, we're going to get bearing resistance calculations. Um, and we'd expect to get a bearing strength value of 602 kilonewtons on the group. So we can go back to our example here. Um, and as we scroll down, we'll see we calculate tension capacity. They didn't calculate it because they don't, we don't need it. We only have a tension force of zero. So this isn't actually um, necessary to do. Same with the combined utilization. It's not necessary to do because we have um, no tension utilization. Um, and now we scroll down to our plate calculations. Again, we have a nice summary of all the values that get used. And for our bearing resistance, um, we calculate a strength of 84 kilonewtons. If I go back to this example, we see that they calculate um, through pretty much the same calculation a value of 85 kilonewtons. So we can scroll down more. We've got punching should check. They didn't do it in the example because it's not needed. Again, it's an tension force. We have um, calculations for dimensions on the plate. So uh, what this is actually doing is is telling us our area. If we had to cut through this, uh, through this plate here, it would tell us what's the gross area, what's the net area. We'll cut vertically through the plate. Um, sorry, not this plate, there will be a four bolt rows. If we'll cut vertically, what's the net area, what's the gross area. So that's what this check here is doing. Um, and we get our different areas that we use for our plate tension failure check and our plate shear failure check. So the plate tension failure check is actually, um, we can omit this because we uh, have a web, a vertical web that's going to provide a lot of tension strength. Uh, for failure in the vertical direction, potential failure in the vertical, direct, vertical direction. So this check, based on our geometry, um, is required. For our plate shear failure, that could happen. Um, and it's going to require failure through failure through both bolt columns, so failure through here and failure through here, for it's actually failing shear. So in this calculation, you'll see two times the vertical um, net area, or gross area, um, represented by two, these two areas, and then we can get calculations for our gross section capacity and our net section capacity. And this is the same values as what's in the design example. Um, what might be better actually is if I put these side by side. So with this side by side, I might be able to see it's a bit better. So here we can see for the plate shift failure calculation for gross section capacity, we calculate a value of 725 kilonewtons, which is the exact same value that calculated. And for the net section capacity, we get a slightly different value, 765 kilonewtons versus 869 kilonewtons. And the difference is because of this factor of safety, they've used the factor of safety for the British NX, which is 1.1 uh, for these kinds of calculations. Whereas we've used the um, factor of safety from the Eurocode, which is 1.25. Um, this is more conservative. 
But if you're using the British calculation, perhaps you want to change that input, that 1.25 input to 1.1, and just run through this calculation um, yourself. For the critical section capacity, the, the, um, the gross section is governed anyway, so we get the same final result, um, and we get the same final utilization as well. If we go down further um, in this section here, we also have the block tearing calculation or block sheet capacity. In our calculation, you can see we've got this general drawing, which is checking all of these possible failure mechanisms. In their example, um, they've kind of quite clearly analyzed what exactly is going on and how it's going to fail in block sheet. But with our tool, because it's a general tool, we're just always checking all these different possible ways you could failure. Um, but it's probably something you just want to double check. You probably want to have a look at this value mechanism that's being considered and is it relevant to the case you're designing. So here we can see we're looking at the block share capacity for a force in the y direction, which is the only force we have. We consider the corner failure, so considering the failure, um, which looks something like this, where if we had a force in the x as well, um, we'd kind of have both forces acting to push this block out. And then we have our other failure mechanism, which is um, something like this, which is the failure mechanism, mechanism we actually want to sit on. Um, I think a failure like this can't occur in this particular example, just because the web's passing through um, the middle of the, of the plate. So it's kind of preventing this um, plane of failure. So this is really the only failure mechanism that we'd want to consider in this example. Um, but again, because this is a general tool, we've just checked all these things anyways. So here in the other failure section, we can see our calculation for the block shoe strength has 674 kilonewtons. Um, so we've got these different lengths, LX1, 19mm, LX2, 19mm and LX3, 118 mil. So in this case, um, the calculation just takes the minimum of LX1 plus LX2 uh, and LX3. So in this case, we're actually only checking this example um, on the left anyway. So this other failure is taking LX equals to the minimum of those conditions I talked about, 38 mils, which is referencing the um, diagram on the left up here, it's representing this diagram. So this should be the same as the value that they calculate. And if we go run through these calculations, I can imagine we might get a slightly different value. We've got 674 kilonewtons here. And for their calculation, they've calculated 691 kilonewtons, not super different. But again, that's just from this factor of safety of 1.1 versus the factor of safety of 1.25. And they've checked all these conditions together to see what the shear phase is going to be. We've just separated these out into two separate checks, the block shear check and the plate shear strength check. Um, and we get the utilization ratio here, um, just here. So that's pretty much everything they've covered. Um, there's the other checks for the other plate. Oh, we're not really having a look at that. There's checks on the supporting beam, but we're not really going to have a look at that um, in this example. So that's everything I wanted to cover from that example. Again, you could check these other things with separate runs. You could check something like this with another run of the tool. But we're going to just go through that first run. Um, there you can see here, all that is just, just and pitch requirements are uh, passing. Uh, that's something that that UI we saw before that kind of helps us to make sure we're actually having valid um, geometry. And that's something that we can check kind of on the input side. But this is just a double check. It shows the values. It shows everything's all good. Um, as a short average scale summary here, um, which is a nice uh, quick summary that shows all the values we had, geometric properties, the bulk design forces, the design resistances, and the utilizations. And here we just see everything in green showing that uh, for this calculation, everything's passing, and everything's okay. So that's all for this design example. I hope you found it useful. We also have other videos talking about force distribution methods, prying, and we also have calculations to the Australian standard and the American standard. If you want to get in touch, um, if you have any questions about this video or any other questions about the tool, always feel free to leave us a message down here and we'll go back to you as soon as we can. Thanks for watching this video.